Okay, today we're going to be talking about configuration files. Let's say you're creating a bash script and the end user is going to have different information that they want to input and you don't want them to have to edit the script every for every user that uses your script. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a config file and we're going to load that into our bash script. But not only are we going to create a config file that uh, our bash script can load, we are going to make it so that if the config file doesn't exist, the bash script will ask the user for the information and create the config file. Now, in this example, Example, I'm going to be using a username and password as two of the variables. This is not a video about security, and I'm in the way we're doing it. This we're we're storing the username and password in plain text in the config file. Normally, don't want to do that. This is not a video about security. This is just an example of different variables being stored in a config file and loaded, and then asked for if they don't exist. And again, these are basic examples that you can tweak. So what I have done is I set up a web server uh, and I'm going to connect to it, but we're going to create a config file that has the uh, address of the server, the port number, a message you want to send, a username and a password. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to look at our shell here and I have a script that exists already. It's called login.sh. If we look at it, it's just a wget command that passes a username, a password, and of course our uh, URL with the IP address, port number, and message to be sent. And if it succeeds, it will print out the message from the server. If it fails, it will echo out fail. Let's go ahead, X out of this. It's Ori uh, made executable. Ori has permissions to run. I'm going to say uh, login.sh, and we get success. If I go back in there and I change either the username or the password, I could just remove a letter from there. If I run it now, it's going to get a fail. Great, so right off the bat, there's better ways to doing the, this than just having this wget command. So let's go ahead and delete that. And what we would normally want to do in the minimal case is to use variables. So let's go ahead. I'm going to quickly copy and paste here all that information into uh, our script as variables. And then we're going to use our wget command, replacing the information from before with the variables listed above. So now we can run this and it should output the same thing. Success. If we go in here and we change one of the variables, like my username to a username that doesn't exist and we try running it, we will get fail. Let's go back in and change this uh, to the proper things. So again, it will run properly real quick. Let's go. Well, I'll go into the file with Vim. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these rows here. I'm going to delete them from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a config file. I'll just call it config. Okay. And I will paste in those variables. Now, if we try to run our login script, obviously it's going to fail, right? Because it doesn't have any of that information. But if we go back into it, well, not into our config file, but into our script itself. And I just say source and I source that config file. Now, whoop, <laughs> sorry. Now, it does work. So basically what the source command does, uh, I keep going into the wrong file. We are done going into the config file. Okay. Source, basically it's like a header file for C. Uh, basically it takes what's in that file, in this case, our config file, which is just a, a plain text file. And basically it's inserting it right there in this script. So it's just like typing all that stuff into this file. Now I'm using a config file that is directly in the same uh, directory as my script. Normally you wouldn't want that. Normally it would go in your home directory, most likely under the dot config and then a folder with the name of your project. But just for simplicity of this tutorial, I'm putting it in the same directory. You just will adjust the name for namesake. So we have a config file, but what if that config file doesn't exist? And of course you need to generate it right off the bat. Uh, so what we would do before we source it is that we would check to see if that file exists. And of course, I right here said config, uh, you're gonna want the name and of course the full URL or full path name to our config file. So let's use a variable. Variables are always good to use. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call it config file. And again, in this case, it's in the same directory, we're gonna call it config. So I'm gonna take it and what I'm gonna do is uh, before I source it, I'm gonna check does that file exist? So here we're saying, does this file exist? What file? The file that we've listed up here. To pipe symbols means if that fails, does it exist? If it fails, um, then we're going to create the config file, which we're going to create a function to do that here in a moment. And of course, down here, when we do source it, we're going to source 
that file that we have in the variable. With me? I hope so. Let's go on. We are going to now create a function that if that file doesn't exist so far, we will ask the user for that information and create it. So we're going to say function. And again, as I've mentioned in the past, when creating functions in Bash, I like to write function, but really you don't need to do that. You can just give it the function name. I just think it looks clearer, especially as someone who's not familiar with Bash, uh, if you write function before that, that this is a function. And I'm copying and pasting stuff just so you don't have to see me type 100 different things. We are going to use the read command, right? So we're going to read and we're going to prompt username. Then we're going to put that into a variable for user. Here I'm going to say read and I'm going to do dash s since this is a password. It's secret. It won't show uh, as the user types since I'm doing that uh, dash s here. We're going to put that into a variable called password. And then I'm echoing just because when you're using that dash s option, it doesn't give you a new line character uh, by default. So we want that so that the next message doesn't show up on the same line as this. But we go through for each of those variables. That's great. We've got them all. Now what do we want to do? Well, we want to put them into our config file. So again, we have our variable created uh, config underscore file and all I'm going to do is I'm going to echo in user equals dollar sign user password equals dollar sign password so forth and so on and we're going to pipe this greater than symbol so we're going to override an existing file if it does exist although we just checked if it does exist but we're going to check some other things later on to where it might exist but we still ask for this information um, so let's go ahead Let's save this and let's go ahead and run it. And it should off the bat because we haven't created that, or actually we do have a config file. It's just gonna work. It's gonna say success. Uh, but if I was to remove our config file and run our script now, it's gonna start asking me information. And I can type in Chris, I can type in password for password. I can type in the IP address. And again, with the password, it didn't show the password because I gave it that dash S flag saying this is a secret. And then port 8080. And then our message can be anything. Hello, people. Boom. And then I finished doing that. It created the config file and it ran our command successfully, right? So uh, again, if I list out files here, we have our script and we have our config file, again, in our current directory, but in real life, you want to put that somewhere in the home directory, preferably the .config file and in a subdirectory within there. Again, I can cat out our config file here. Great. What happens if when they're typing that information, they decide to leave one of those blank? Well, let's go a little bit further with our script. So I will go into our script file again. <clears throat> and then here, after we source it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And there might be a cleaner way to do this, uh, but what I'm doing here is I am saying, does the variable user exist? If not, then let's run the function create config. I could just ask for the username, but I'm gonna just go through the whole creating the config file again and overriding it. So now if I was to run this, of course it's gonna run properly because our config file is, is proper. If I was to remove our config file and run our script again like so, it sees that, uh, it's, that the config file doesn't exist and it's gonna ask me for username and a password. And let's just say I start leaving stuff blank and then I'll type a message, whatever. It is going to ask me again because it saw that one of those variables was blank and it's saying, I need all these variables. So now I can type that. I can type in password. I can type in the server name and I can type in the port 8080 and our message, which is whatever. Boom, success. I run the script again, success, and it will be successful. Now you could add on to this. That's pretty much all I've done so far. Uh, but what we could do is uh, instead of fail, uh, you could say, okay, if it fails, then go back and create the config file, but it might fail for other reasons. Maybe the server's down. I don't know. So that, that's a little more in depth specific to your script, but I hope you learned something. I'm going to put a link to the description to this example code so you can look over it. Uh, but yeah, this is sourcing files and that's a great way to make configuration files. So now anyone who downloads this script can run it and it'll ask for their information and store it for their user if you have it saved to their home directory. And there could be multiple users on one system and they can all have their own config files. Again, don't save passwords and plain text like this. That's usually a bad idea. Um, 
and this is not a video on security, but there could be a lot of variables for individual users that uh, you may want, and you don't want to hard code that into your script. That's just a bad habit of, of hard coding variables that are variable to different users into your script so where they have to edit the script. You don't want end users having to edit the script just for simple things like that. Creating a config file is a great way to go, and this is a simple way to do it. Again, we went from a one-line script to a multiple-line script, but it's much user-friendly for, for that end user who may not be a programmer. So check it out. Links in the description. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There, there's uh, links to all my videos. You can search through them all. There's also a support section, a section where you can go to all my different scripts, both on GitLab and Pastebin. And again, you can support me through LibrePay, PayPal, and I do have a Patreon. And I really appreciate my Patreon supporters. I only have a few, though. I have a lot of subscribers, but very few patrons. Um, if you like my videos, think about supporting. I would appreciate that. I don't think I've ever had more than 10 patrons uh, at a time, and I have almost or maybe over 60,000 subscribers at this time. Uh, so if you get a lot of my videos, uh, you know, a dollar or two, or maybe more uh, a month would help, and I would appreciate it. But if not, think about liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.